back to let's find out with Edgar. <sighs> so everyone thinks that Edgar is cheating on Rosalie with a man. Is that the truth? We shall find out in the third chapter. Edgar's having money trouble. I'm positive that's what he's hiding from me. I leave the hotel and search for games that will fetch a high price. Once I find something appropriate, I take it down with my bow and arrow. I continue to follow and hunt game to rid myself of these bad thoughts. There, thanks for helping. This should be plenty. This should take care of Edgar's money troubles for the time being. Having satisfied myself with my hunt, I finally have a chance to take in the scenery. When I do, I realize I'm surrounded by blooming roses. Somehow, I ended up in the rose forest. Huh? So you have, Rosalie. Besides me, a red rose sways. Oh! Rosa passed! <laughs> You were so involved in your hunting, you didn't notice? No, I'm sorry. My, that's quite the long face. Did something happen, perhaps? It's nothing, really. My, you shouldn't keep things from me. Please tell me what's wrong. Kindly encouraged by Rosa Past, I tell her all what has been happening recently. I feel like Edgar is cheating on me, and that he is in need of money somehow. Don't you? Rosa Pass shakes her flower, as though smiling. I think it's all a misunderstanding on your part, Rosalie. After all, Edgar loves Edgar's love for you is always genuine, isn't it? Mm. I'm sure I'm overthinking things. I know that. But even so, I still just can't let go of the possibility that it could be happening. So I want to prepare for that reality. Mm. That's what we all do, when we feel like something bad is coming up. Oh. I didn't think it would be that much. I understand. Well, I will pray that it's simply that you are mistaken, Rosalie. Thank you, Rosa Pass. When I go back to the castle, I'm going to tell Edgar just what I'm feeling. Having gained courage from Rosa Pass, I leave the forest behind, walking with Bear and dragging my take behind me. Mm -hmm. I steadily grow closer to the beautiful castle-like hotel. Bear stops in his tracks and begins to growl. Bear, what is it? No way. What is going on? I'm shocked to see what Edgar is doing at the hotel entrance. He's hugging the man I saw before in the forest. This just can't be happening. I find myself running away and placing myself in between Edgar and the man. Force, having forced the two apart, I turn to face the man. Just what do you think you're th Just what do you think? Just what do you think you're thinking? Hug just what do you think you're doing? Hugging, hugging Edgar like this? Hey, Rosalie. Don't just stand there. Say something. This is a bit of a problem. The man stares at Edgar, scratching his head. Don't look at Edgar like that! Rosie, what is with him? Shut up, Edgar! This is between me and him! Edgar's head placed his hand on my shoulder, but I shake it off and move in on the man. Listen closely. Edgar is my man, and I'm definitely not letting you have him. Finally, we're gonna get the truth. So, what's the deal? Through the love challenges of Tartars I go. Wait, cat bell bag? It's a cat bell bag? And Rosalie has a dog? <laughs> what is it with this? What is The man's eyes grow wide for a second before he breaks into a hearty laugh. <laughs> What's so funny? Are you trying to say we're through? No, you're completely right. Edgar's your man. When he says that, all of the tense strain built up inside me goes free in an instant. I can't let things get more mixed up in this. Edgar, I'll be going now. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I have to say, I'm jealous of a beautiful woman who loves me this much. Oh, He's blushing! Look at this! 
Look at this. Look at this. I have to take a picture. Look at this blush. Uh, thanks. I'll explain everything to Rosa. Edward says that sheepishly, his face turning a little red, and the man heads away, laughing again as he goes. Edgar lets out a deep sigh and faces me with a frazzled look. I thought you were acting different lately. But is that what you thought was going on, Edgar? At first, you thought the fact that I was going out by myself was suspicious. You suspected I was cheating, right? That's right. I mean, when I went to your room, you wouldn't let me in. So why did you think I was cheating? Well... When you came back, you smelled of shampoo, and Beryl was always barking at you! And why did you think I was cheating on you with him? Well... Jack said... That is to say, I had Jack smell you. And he said it wasn't a woman, it was a man. Flustered, I desperately tried to explain. So you followed me and saw us together? Yes, and I saw you take money from him, and... You thought I needed money and was taking on some unseemly work to get it. But your shirt was ripped and you talked about him liking things in tents. Oh, for the love of... How did you manage to get turned around like this? Edgar throws his hands up and shrugs as though he wants to say something. Well, if you've misunderstood this completely, it might be best to just show you. Huh? Show me what? You want to see with your own eyes what's going on. What is going on with what you... You want to see with your own eyes that what's going on is not what you imagined, right? Edgar replies, sounding a little sour. But there's one thing. Bernard can't come with us. Oh, Puppy doesn't like that. We'll be right back, so don't get too worked up. Fine, dear. I'll be back soon. Please just wait here. Aww. Good puppy. When Bear settles down, Edgar takes my hand and leads me to the forest. We've come along an overgrown path into a, pa into a part of the forest where I've never been. This part feels different from the rest of the forest, and the air feels sacred somehow. Edgar, just where, just what were you doing here? You'll know shortly. Edgar whistles, and a horned magical creature like a deer closely approaches. My goodness. This magical animal, isn't it almost extinct? That's right. They're an unwelcome creature to vampires, so they are rare around these parts. But the magical creature has, grown, has drawn close to Edgar. Now don't be scared. This is Rosalie. She's a very special person to me. Isn't she beautiful? Edgar speaks as though he's introducing me to the creature. He pats the creature lovingly and turns his smile toward me. Just from that, I can feel my heart ache at the adorableness. Hello? Is it okay to pet you? When I hesitantly touch its head, the creature closes its eyes, seeming to enjoy the attention. Oh, it's so cute! Was this the little one the reason you hadn't been at the hotel? Yeah, that's right. I was heading to the hotel one day when I found this little critter injured. Off to the side was that man seemingly troubled and unable to approach it. That was the man from before? Yeah, he was upset because he knows a lot about the species, but he wasn't able to give it treatment. But you're a vampire. But you're a vampire. How are you able to? I can't say I know myself, even now, but in any case, it let me approach it. And so that man asked me to help out, and I ended up taking care of this fellow. This fellow. So that's why you were never in your room. I wish you would have told me. Since it's a rare magical creature, I thought it might stir up interest in the hotel and be a problem. If it got killed by some no-good hunter, it'd all be for nothing. 
but Bernard picked up the scent as soon as I got back. So after that, you started showering before you came back, right? That's right. I thought that if I did that, I could go mostly unnoticed. The band's house is nearby, so I used the shower there. So the door and close were because of this animal, too? Right. I messed up on trying to give it the food and medicine to prepared. Got scared and struck out. So that's what it was. Are you satisfied now, Leslie? Yes, but there's one more thing. Why did you give the man? Why did the man give you money? It was for the torn clothing. He said it was his responsibility. Also, that the creature got scared and lashed out, and I made take compensation. I told him I didn't need it, that I was just helping him treat it because I wanted to. That's what was going on when I saw the two of them. <sighs> well, it's nice to know that he wasn't cheating our Rosalie. The fog of doubt I had inside me clears instantly. I plan to introduce you to this fellow after I got used to vampires. But you kept doing unusual things and in the end ended up mis misconstructing our relationship. Well, you were hugging that man in front of the hotel! You hugged me saying he was glad that this fellow- He was hugging- He hugged me saying that he was glad that this fellow had recovered. It ate food from his hand for the first time. So even if I'm not there anymore, he can take care of it. So I really did just misunderstand everything. I told you to trust me, didn't I? Well, are you finally satisfied? Yes, Edgar. From the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Edgar sighs, steps away from the magical creature, and pulls me in suddenly. I like seeing him this close to her. Listen, Rosalie. Just remember this. He hugs me tightly and presses his lips against my ear. On my life, I will never be in a relationship with anyone other than you, Rosalie. You will always be the one I love. Only you. Edgar's words immediately send my heart racing. But contrary to that passion, Edgar seems in a bad mood even ever since then. After returning to his room, Edgar lies on the bed and stares at the ceiling. No matter how much I talk to him at his side, his mood doesn't improve. Hey, Edgar, please, look at me. Are you still mad? I'm not mad. I'm just sad you didn't trust me. Oh, please forgive me, Edgar. I wanted to trust you, but this coincidence just kept making me doubt you. Still, I wish you had believed in me. I know, I'm sorry. I'll never doubt your love again. I love you, Edgar. Please cheer up. At last, Edgar pulls me a little bit closer to him. If you love me, then will you heal this wounded heart with your soft skin? What? Uh, of course. I'm to blame this time, so I'll do as you say. Okay, first off. Will you kiss me here? Edgar points to his lips and gives me a bold smile. I place a light kiss on Edgar's lips. That's not enough. I can't feel your love with only that. You want more? Yeah. Tell me how much you love me and kiss me again. Edgar's eyes fall on my, fall on my mouth. There's something incredibly romantic about that and my heart quivers. Fine, Edgar. I love you. I give Edgar a deeper, longer kiss than before. Rosalie, I'm no match for you. When he whispers that, Edgar pins me down. My pulse begins to race. Now it's my turn. You'll be getting my sweet, passionate kisses all night long. Edgar? You said you'll do whatever I wanted, right? I won't make you regret saying it. As I answer, Edgar gives me a kiss even more passionate than usual, one that completely charms my heart. Rosalie, you're the one I love, and that will never, ever change. 
So don't ever doubt my love again, okay? My body gradually burns warmer from his breathy, breathy proclamation of love. Yes, Edgar, and I was calling you forever too. Well, let's heat things up and have you prove that to me. Edgar smiles and his eyes glitter red, feeling Edgar's love pouring over me. Our flustered skin presses together, and I surrender myself to the pleasure. All night long, I'm filled to the brim with Edgar's love. <sighs> That's that for now. Stay warm, look. <laughs> I am Jenny the Artsy Rose, and that's that for now. Oh, by the way! Look what I have! <laughs> they have a... I bought some interesting items today. They finally let out, uh, Rosalie's items. <sighs> About time, too. I was wondering when we were gonna get these new... the new look. Now I can give Edgar, uh, a new wardrobe. <laughs> it's cute. And what's this? Oh, I completed a mission. And it is more story tickets. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Well, I am Jandy the Artsy Rose, and I shall see you in another video. Goodbye.